Welcome, everyone. <laughs> How are you today? Good? Good. Good. So this is part two of our Lair of the Bear virtual workshop. Um, I gave you some challenges, some games to play okay. together, and I am excited to show you all what you came up with. It's, um, it's juicy. Spoiler <laughs> alert, it's juicy. Um, <laughs> So um, we are going to relish your creativity, which you pulled together so quickly. Oh my God. And what I want to hear from each of you when we look at your images and your responses is a couple of things. One is, what does this mean to you? And second, the, the image you created, what does it mean to you? And secondly, is, is my hypothesis correct in your experience? Do, is art making a pathway to resilience in your own empirical experience? So um, that's, I'm curious to hear from each of you, your thoughts on that. So I think we're gonna dig in and then we get to hear from each of you, yes? Okay. I'm gonna share my screen and we'll start looking at what you guys came up with here. A lot of joy ahead. Okay. We're gonna start right here. <laughs> Look at the joy here. <laughs> One of you came up with this gorgeous image. This is, this is, yeah, this is um, sheer joy. I asked you to um, take a pandemic selfie and Sue, you came up with this extraordinary image. So you're gonna start us off with sheer joy here. What does this image mean to you? This is rising above it all. I, I um, went up on my mountain, Mount Diablo is its common name, but, um, I got to the top and nobody was there and I was all by myself and everybody was stuck in the doom and gloom below all those clouds and they should have been with me. <laughs> and I just set my camera up on a rock and this is devil's pulpit. I, I climbed up on devil's pulpit and took an Im image of myself rising above it all. That is beautiful. And doesn't the phrase devil's pulpit seem a bit ironic here in light of <laughs> it's, it's Mount Diablo. That's why it's a devil. That's it. That's right. And yet this is, this is so angelic. Um, <laughs> Eli, I saw you respond to this. What are you observing here? Are we allowed to clap? I think there's applause. Yes, 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 yes. Yay! <laughs> um, what are you applauding here, Eli? Well, thanks for rising above it all for us. Yeah, it has a contagious feeling, doesn't it? You guys all catching this feeling? That's very positive. Yeah. So all I can say is don't jump. jump. <laughs> don't, don't jump. Jump. <laughs> jump. <laughs> so, you know, I have... I have friends who think I'm crazy because first of all, I go out on these places by myself, but then I stand out on the rocks. And this is not the first time I've taken a selfie while out alone on a place that looks precarious. It's not as precarious as it looks. It's all a trick. Just crazy enough to be fun. That's right. Right? That's, That's right. the artist's prerogative. Just mm -hmm. crazy enough to be fun. I it's love kind that. of a salutation to the sun as well. Yes. Absolutely. And Sheer the big joy. wide world. Mm -hmm. So is it true, Sue? Is, is art making a path to resilience? Absolutely. I, when I go out and do this kind of thing, I'm combining my um, adventurous spirit with my image making, and I always feel so much better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it takes away the gloom, whether I'm above the clouds or in the midst of them. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And where do you feel that? You feel it in your body? Yeah. It's an emotional thing, mm -hmm. you know, and I feel more able then to help other people rise up, if that yeah. makes sense. That is so true. You know, then your smile's better at the grocery store, even behind the mask, so that people can tell you're smiling without seeing your mouth. Mm -hmm. um, just your general over overall outlook on life seems improved when you do something that you enjoy. And I right away sent this photo to friends I knew, knew were having a hard time. Right. Anybody you want know? to respond to what she's saying? 
Well, I, th I think the other thing is if you had to climb all the way to the very top of Mount Diablo, you became aware of your heart and your breath. Mm -hmm. And so yes. that made you even more present to the moment. And I think that's why we go, we have those aha moments when we finally make it to mm -hmm. that, having really expended a lot of energy in our bodies. Mm. Yeah. Such a good well, true thing. confession, I did not hike all the way up. Oh. <laughs> what did not you do? Just day. drove? <laughs> I, I drove. Well, I was taking this wonderful class called Booming in Place, and I was in search of water. <laughs> the kind that's suspended. Yes. I mean, it almost looks like if you did jump, it would be like a mattress and you would bounce back. You know. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> so beautiful, Sue. Um, oh, passing along you. your own resilience here to us. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Okay. Who do we have here? Mm. Our 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 most colorful Nancy. <laughs> Nancy, what does this mean to you? Well, um, uh, I've actually been going out and discovering uh, many new paths. Um, this one's quite close to my home, but I rarely used it. They were originally uh, put in um, to get into town where because the houses were all built close together and it was in before there were a lot of cars. So the paths uh, in Berkeley and Kensington are fantastic. And, and I love just walking to a new neighborhood and all of a sudden there's a path and taking it. So it's literally discovering new paths and then new paths within photography, which would be playing around with some of the apps. So I think this was maybe my second double exposure or maybe the first. So that was fun to do. And I need to learn, you know, which kind of images will work better to do this. Yes, indeed. Yeah, you're a lifelong learner in that way, Nancy, always staying on your toes with new learning new things here. Um, have you heard of the Path Wanderers uh, League? Oh, Berkeley Path Wanderers. Yeah, the Berkeley Path Wanderers. Yeah. They, they, yeah. they wander. They're wanderers. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best deal in town. It's $5 a year membership. Uh, are you a member? Yes, been so ah. for a long time. Oh. Of course you are. <laughs> So does anyone see anything in this image that Nancy hasn't named yet? Can anyone relate to this image? Well, it's kind of a tie-dyed um, for the layer. <laughs> yes, yes, which is very colorful. My, the buff, which I now learned. This was right at the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, the air wasn't safe enough to go out yesterday. So this was at the beginning. And now we know that buffs are not good to wear. Right. I mean, what I see here is a willingness to go inward and to be introspective and to use your artistry to do so. Mm -hmm. Do you all see that? Mm -hmm. It's the picture of introspection, you know, that, that willingness to walk inward. It's tough terrain sometimes, but I see that you're, you're, you're willing, you're present for that. Lots of alone time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. Isn't that one of the big challenges of life for a social species, learning how to be alone, <laughs> to enjoy that alone time? Absolutely. And this, this, the stairs are leading upwards, so it's, ah. it's getting better. Right. There is optimism oh. in that sense, isn't there, Bob? Yes. And yeah. light. Oh, go ahead, Becky. Okay, go ahead. Oh, just, you know, I think of how we wear masks because of aerosols that we're and we're afraid of the virus on the aerosols but instead of aerosols invisible aerosols i'm seeing leaves beautiful green leaves and mm. somehow it takes it and turns it on its head so what's what's in the air in front of her is, is something beautiful and healthy yes. and, and i think you look beautiful here nancy you know there's a beauty <laughs> even in you know just the windswept hair <clears throat> Just it's there's a beautiful presence here, so um, it seems true to who you are. Lovely. The internal presence as well. A moment, uh, like what you're thinking and what you're seeing is also has the leaves. It's it's growing. That's right. And Nancy, is it true? Is art making a path to resilience in your experience? Oh yes, I completely get into the zone and 
not think about anything else. In the zone. In the zone. <laughs> exactly. Yes. We get into the zone. You're in the zone here. <laughs> Okay, an abstract selfie. <laughs> well, I call it planted. <laughs> because it, it had a bit of a, you know, botanical feel to me. Soil and, and, and then shrub, leaf, tree. I, I, not leaf, but um, so it, particularly from a distance, it's sort of like one of those images. I remember seeing an image of Jacques Cousteau mm. created with seashells. And you know, it, it, the further you stood away, the more it looked like a photograph. Ah. But up close, it was all little seashells. And so from a distance, this had that more tree-like, you know, and seeing the roots kind of impression for me. And just in response to our, you know, our first meeting and the talk about play and what other kinds of art we do, I decided to go back to something I'd done with my seventh graders you know, a couple decades ago, and it would ha was based on the patterns in nature, <laughs> like Great. one of our uh, tours, and, and it's the thing of having a liquid uh, ink paint between two panes of glass, and it's actually when you separate the glass, you get the branching pattern. And How this you get here? And uh, um, this didn't branch as much, but it was one that sort of spoke to me as, as sort of capturing feeling planted and planted has its disadvantages as we all know, but it also, you're still open, you know, to possibilities, the sky, the, mm -hmm. I don't know. So it, it kind of captured, I guess, what I've been feeling planted, but wow. rooted challenges, grounded? but also with something wonderful about it. Right. Like, are you talking about being rooted and grounded? Yeah. Rooted, grounded. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's beautiful. Um, what are what are the rest of you seeing here in this in this view? I'm I'm on the space station looking back at Earth. Yeah, and I'm seeing a very wonderful delta. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It and a place mm -hmm. full of life. Mm hmm. Fertile ground. Mm hmm. There's a great photographer named Jan Artus Bertrand who did a portfolio that is gobsmacking called the earth from above and a lot of the images look like this where you're getting to see just the really macro scale of hy hy hydrological phenomena mm. other responses to what you're seeing here it's almost blue and gold oh blue and gold nancy <laughs> <laughs> hey, and i was thinking of that when i when i used raw raw umber and, you guys <laughs> and blue ink <laughs> That's great. I see a brain here. You know, do you see this part? Mm. It's like the, 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 the top of the brain. Yeah. And it's like a face and, and this is the brain stem. And, and this is, you know, the liminal space where maybe meaning is, is attempted to be made. And, and I think that, you know, when you look at something like hydroelectric, hydrological features on the macro scale, or if you look at roots and they're, they're dendritic. We call roots, dendrites are roots, right? They're dendritic mm -hmm. um, patterns. We also see that in the brain, that the neurons in our own brains are dendritic. That's what we call them, they're dendrites. So I think there's a resonance on multiple scales here. We as creatures of fractal neuron brains resonate with this. We're part of this. We're like creatures of this earth deeply. Um, Cindy, is it true, this thesis? What thesis? <laughs> that, that art is a pathway to resilience? Oh, absolutely. Just for example, Sue's photo, I felt joy. I mm. felt vi a vicarious joy. And as if I were, were there for that, you know, moment I was looking at it. Mm -hmm. so, um, mm -hmm. and, and certainly with, um, I, I, do, I do, yes, I do think, particularly if one sort of gets lost, all that matters sometimes when you're doing art is what you're doing and the effect you're getting. Mm -hmm. Like as I would watch the, as I press the two pieces of glass together, uh, all that mattered in the world was what patterns happened and how they changed when I, you know, added more pressure or less or slid one glass on top of the other. 
And so uh, that's all that mattered in the world. Not, yeah. not politics, not, <laughs> not um, endemic, you know, that's all gone. Exactly. Moments. I think what you're describing is a, is the sense, the experience of feeling fully integrated. And, and sometimes we feel very scattered or fragmented. And so art gives us the experience of being viscerally integrated for that time. Mm -hmm. It feels good. Mm -hmm. It's maybe what we call integrity. Oh, sure. In another meaning of that word, we get to be integral. Mm -hmm. Whole. Yeah. Whole. We get to be whole during oh. that time. Wow. It, I know, right? You people, look what Whoa. you did here. Wow. How'd you do that? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> okay, so I hear you all responding. What are you responding to here before we hear from Eli? <laughs> it's hard to figure out how he did it because <laughs> he's playing with us, isn't he? Well, it's that running into a wall feeling of I need to get through this. Yeah. Yet there's a barrier. But I like that his foot is coming through. He has one foot in two worlds, right? Yeah. Yeah. And he's split between light and dark. And he's oh, on the precipice yeah. of both, right? Wow. In, in a way, it's also, I'll say, Alice through the looking glass. Oh, from the totally. Glass side. Totally busting through, right? Yes. And look at the openness to do so. He's wide open. He's like, he's like gonna hurdle himself through that rabbit hole. <laughs> and it's off center, it's, it's off kilter. Like the world uh -huh. is. Yes, yeah. like the world. Yeah. Things are, things are off kilter and yet it looks like the picture of shining in place. It's looks like a leap of faith and for me. Yeah. You know, um, you don't, well, you, oh, well, anyway, it's just, just almost like that openness is like the leap of faith. I want to, I want to pick up on that phrase, Cindy, the leap of faith. That was a term that was coined by Soren Kierkegaard, a great philosopher whom I adore. And I encourage us all to read him, even though we have graduated from college. His, his <laughs> words are, are wasted on young people. Kierkegaard is meant for older people. He is funny as all get out. And what, and he came up with that phrase leap of faith and the reason he came up with it he said you know <clears throat> things are tough here let's admit it living is hard right mm -hmm. and how do we deal with how hard it is well we embrace absurdity deeply as artists do and we take a leap of faith so you can see that here you know Embrace absurdity and take a leap of faith. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Eli, what, what are you thinking about here in this selfie? Well, several levels. You know, they, they, they uh, took my front door and put a plastic sheet instead. They, <laughs> while it's smoky and you can't block out the smoke now. Oh, God. They took our world and they replaced it with something kind of a facsimile <laughs> of it. And so, you know, mm. trying to get through the portal and trying to make it through. Um, practically, I took a picture of myself on the outside and then did the same pose or almost on the inside and did the Photoshop trick of bringing my foot through. Oh, I might be off kilter. I almost adjusted. Oh. But, it, that's so yeah, cool. I tried to push through the portal, trying to relax my way through the portal. But dance, too. You're a dancer, and I can see that in your gesture here. Mm-hmm. Mm. And I also, isn't this the picture of literally thinking outside the box? <laughs> well, trying yeah. to get your toe outside the box, kind of. Okay, <laughs> Eli, this is fabulous. Thank you. I like. <laughs> I, I like the the feeling of liminality that he's going from one dimension to another, and so he's mm. making a transition. I don't know. I just think it's a fascinating photo. Truly. I mean, how how often do we do that? Where we actually step into another realm mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so a good selfie is an ussy because we can put ourselves in it and <laughs> see to it right so eli you've made i yeah. mean and sue but i mean sue, this is like the flip side of sue's image right it's the same posture as sue we're seeing her from behind eli we're seeing them from in front it's the same open gesture 
and we can put ourselves in this posture and imagine this kind of openness and get the breath that Marion's talking about. Mm -hmm. So thank you for the It's talk. rather metamorphosis like. Oh, too. <laughs> thank you for bringing Kafka into the workshop soon. <laughs> 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 it's about time. How many minutes in are we and we haven't mentioned Kafka? <laughs> <laughs> it's a shame. Okay, so so far 23 minutes in, we've got Kierkegaard and Kafka. People, the stakes are high here. <laughs> Game on. So Eli, is it true that art is a pathway to resilience? Indeed. Uh, uplifting and inspiring, um, especially if I can share something and make it meaningful, worthwhile. Yes. And just the looking for beauty is, in itself brightens the world. Yes. I call it beauty yes. hunting. Yes. So I'll, I'll wake up in the morning and say, okay, today, you know, if I'm lucky, I get to go beauty hunting, right? <laughs> And I'll set aside a couple of hours for beauty hunting. And it, it satisfies that hunting impulse we have, but it's hunting for the sublime. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Let's see. Do we have somebody joining the room here? Oh, Leslie Martin is joining us. Let's see. Leslie, do we have you with us? Hi, Leslie. So sorry. <laughs> Welcome. So glad you could be with us. We are um, reviewing some selfies here. I'm going to let you just drink this in for a moment. Thank you. Right? Um, and actually, I'm going to very quickly, just for Leslie's benefit, um, very quickly just look at the selfies slash ussies that people have offered up mm -hmm. as um, just, just beauty, just oh. sheer beauty here. Look at you guys. <laughs> so we've caught you up, Leslie. We're testing the hypothesis of whether art is indeed a pathway to resilience. Let's look at your love letters to the lair. Oh, you guys are in for a treat here. Nancy, right on time, Leslie. I'm glad you joined us right before I'm about to share Nancy's slideshow. Nancy, do you want to say anything before I press play here? Um, yes, okay, so in trying to figure out what I loved about the lair, um, and I, without exaggerating, I'm sure I have, you know, 10,000 photos. And so trying to pick my top maybe 100, and then I found out with this particular slideshow, after I had selected 75 that I just had to show, <laughs> I could only show 50. So it's kind of showing the love in terms of it really means family, that, that's probably the number one thing. And, and then that the children just love it. And then the beauty of the camp itself, yeah, so it's family, kids. Yeah. So beautiful. Um, we may have to play it twice, but but buckle in here for some verklempt stuff. Okay. I, I don't know if Caroline's still here, but I think there's a picture of her as an infant. Caroline, are you with oh. us? Oh, okay. We have you she, had, she, had, she had to take off. Ah, uh, okay. okay. Well, you're I'm here. You, Kathy, I, you're in this slideshow so oh. let us let us look at this oh oh and it's it's out of order i couldn't get there that's caroline oh, isn't it? caroline is a baby there, that's caroline also with her great grandfather my sister kathy oh you too look at you oh annie yeah. leibovitz larabitz <laughs> annie larabitz the scrabble Kathy. Mm. Tiny chest. Oh. Oh, that's cute. Cow suit. Kathy, you're so young there. <laughs> oh jeez. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. 
Oh, and also it's just family week. I, I had to narrow it down. <laughs> oh. you, you getting all the family feels here? <clears throat> oh, that is beautiful. You know, um, Nancy, you had noted that these were out of order and this isn't the last image you wanted to end on, but I love this last image because of the wispy tea, you know, the, 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 the steam rising off of the tea and tea is such a comforting thing. And to me, this is about the ephemeral nature of our experiences, you know, and, and they sort of disappear and yet we still cherish them like you are doing so here. Okay, and then it, but I, I, in truth, it, it's coffee or hot chocolate, and it would be first thing in the morning. And uh, anyway, I tried to put them in order several times, and they would just pop out of order. So I'm going to play this one more time, and as we do, can I hear from you what this means to you, and and what it means to you to make it? Well, it's a, it's a place that just basically hasn't changed since 1952, and everything else in life has changed. And, and to see like Caroline as an infant and now having been on the staff, um, well, that was women's wellness. Um, yeah, and Scrabble, as you know, is a big part of my life. Yeah. Are, yeah. So it's consistency, a certain kind yeah. of familiarity. Correct. And, and family being at the root of familiarity. Yes. Right? And, and so much joy here. What else are the rest of you observing? Well, I love the pictures of my grandfather, my grandparents. Those are fun to see again. And Nancy is a little, little lair kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, so many memories here. Kathy, what's it like to see photos of you? <laughs> my hair, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's wild. You know, it's, I, I've seen a lot of these pictures before. It's always just, um, they're time capsules, right? So yeah, um, yeah. They, they bring back a lot of happy memories. We used to have, we used to celebrate my grandparents' anniversary um, at the lair with, for the whole would join us and those celebrations were great family events and camp events and a layer tradition for us so those are really good happy memories yeah yeah my, my parents were married on the fourth of july so um we always were up at camp on the fourth of july and so um they celebrated their 60th wedding anniversary up there with another couple who was celebrating their 40th. So we had a hundred years of marriage and invited all three camps. Amazing. And, um, and Nancy, is it true that um, art making as a process has been a source of resilience for you? You seem to be made of resilience. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I mean, it's just so much fun to go through all these images and, and put them together. And um, it's a great project, ongoing <laughs> layer photos. Yes, ongoing. Thank you for the time and effort you put into it. It's lovely to see the layer from the vantage point of someone who has lived so much of it and cherished it well. So, um, oh, whoops, okay. And now here you are, Kathy, from, uh, from, when did you take this, yesterday, today? This morning. This morning. This is oh. fresh, off, fresh out of this morning. <laughs> so, um, Kathy, what does this mean to you? Um, it just, it was staying in a tent at camp like I normally do, although the tent top was open, so um, there's nobody in camp, so... I was changing in the tent and sleeping in the tent like this and nobody was around so it didn't matter actually my husband John was with me but that that nobody else was within yard you know, 100 yards plus hmm. um, yeah and I just it was such a beautiful morning and it was a great way to spend the night to have the stars and um, the trees so uh, visible and the darkness we heard coyotes last night um, hmm. Yeah, it was just a really, it just felt very serene and um, 
we had a great night last night. We had a mixer that took place, but after that we had dinner and sat outside with some people that were at there, there and just nice conversation, beautiful night. Just felt like a really relaxing, even though I was there basically for working, it was still just a lovely getaway, um, no smoke. And um, I had walked through the camps yesterday afternoon and I took some pictures, um, but I just felt like this morning just felt, um, it felt different and um, yeah, just so peaceful. Peaceful. Can you all feel that peace here? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's not Cindy. Sure, yeah. Yeah, sure. How did you choose this particular cabin given that so many tents were available? They're not really available. The other tents mm -hmm. don't have anything inside of them or they are crammed with mattresses. So uh, this has been my tent all summer when I've gone up, which I go up about every two weeks. So um, this is tent zero zero, and it didn't need any. Um, it didn't need any major repairs. A lot of the tents needed repairs, and those were happening sporadically throughout all three camps. And they, this one just got painted. They're all getting painted, and this one was just painted between the last time I was there and this time. So um, it wasn't. It's, it wasn't really a choice. When I first got there, this was offered, and I've kind of took taken it over. It, it looks like the picture of contentment and contentment is rather elusive for Americans, I believe. Um, Kathy, did you, did you test out this hypothesis of whether art making is a path to resilience for yourself? I, I hope it will become that. Um, it was definitely fun to think yesterday as I was walking through the camps to look at images and, you know, see what settings resonated with me. So that was really nice. And like I said, this morning, I thought I just, I knew I hadn't emailed the image last night and this morning when I woke up and just seeing how beautiful it was. And um, yeah, I, so it was, it was definitely, I think it will become that. Maybe that's the Great. best way to say that. Mm -hmm. Yes, I trust that it will. And, uh, and you're leaning in already here beautifully. Leaning I want to in. think if there's some beautiful um, geometry here. You have um, trapezoids hidden in the frame. You have triangles, you have rectangles, you have parallelograms. You have so many delicious um, linear elements and good light. So you are off to a fine start here, Kathy. Oh, thanks, Becky. I feel like I'm really the outlier here because you all are so talented. I've been, I'm blown away by what I've seen so far and, and heard what you guys all say. So um, I, I appreciate your welcoming me with this and also being so kind and um, supportive. You know, I think about it as a dance. We've been dancing with the art muses for a very long time. They've been whirling us about and you are welcome to the dance. Thank you. Thank you. I, I feel that and I appreciate that. Lovely. Okay, two <laughs> gorgeous images by Bob here. Um, color and black and white. I'm going to flip back and forth here. Um, Bob, do you want to speak to what these mean to you? Uh, yeah, yes. I, I'd almost say like Sue, I love being, I love hiking in the mountains and in the Sierras especially and taking photographs of where I was hiking. And on Thursday, I did a day trip up to, uh, up to the Sierras to the Wrights Lake area. And that's, that's Island Lake. Mm. Um, and I actually had a selfie. I didn't know I, I would have taken a I would have sent you a selfie if I knew that you wanted those of myself in it by the lake. Because you missed um, Thursday night, but I'm glad you're here with us now. Yep, it was a day trip. I left at 6.15 in the morning and came home about 9 o'clock at night. Um, about a seven-mile round-trip hike up into the mountains. Um, that's standard for me. Live in um, large, Bob. <laughs> and it's just that the Sierras are there. there was this, you can see there was no smoke there. Although around three o'clock the wind was blowing and a little smoke, you can a little bit of smoke came in, but not much. And there were no more than about half a dozen people I saw the whole day up there. So it was delightful. And um, it's, again, the Sierras are phenomenal. There's a lot, a lot of hikes up there. I'm, I'm probably gonna hopefully go back this coming week for a, another day trip to a different part of the Sierras, um, just to get, just to get, to get up there. Just, again, just being up there is just so peaceful. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, and then, and then taking photos of it to have memories of it is just what I love to do. I, I know, I know that there are dragonflies hatching right here in this little spot. <laughs> I know this to be true. 
Uh, this is just so beautiful. Um, other, do other people want to respond to what you're seeing here? Gorgeous. Gorgeous. <laughs> yes. Definitely inviting. The rock on the left with the reflection, it, it looks like you can crawl, swim right through it. Mm. Kind mm -hmm. of a interesting. I think it's the stillness of the water that invites us to be still while we look at it. Yeah. And about, what was it, the end of July, I did a hike in Big Basin State Park. Uh, and once the fires, they let people back mm -hmm. in there, I want to do that same hike again and see what's left. There's a difference between the photos I have from the end of July to when they reopen the park. Which Good. Be I, I'm curious to see. There are a lot of articles coming out right now about how a lot of the oldest trees are actually alive and well, and they have survived the fires because of various adaptive strategies they have, like tannins as fire retarded, things like that. So I'll be curious to see your viewpoint if you notice that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. And, and Bob, for you, is art making a path to resilience? It is, it, where it's a combination of, again, hiking and then photographing of, of, of the, the beauty that's up, that's, that, I, that I see when I hike. It's just, it's just incredible for me. It's mm -hmm. calming and uh, if, I, if, I, if I don't go hiking, I just get antsy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you're paying attention mm -hmm. to that antsiness and giving yourself what you need. Yes. Excellent. Kathy, that's the trick um, in part to starting an art practice is noticing that you are, forgive me, what I will call spiritually constipated or <laughs> antsy, mm -hmm. right? And then giving yourself the art, art tools that you need. Okay, noted. That's noted. a shot too. That's just... Just gorgeous. It, isn't it something? Yeah, Epic. yeah. Epic. It's like what we love about Pinecrest, this kind of scenery. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and it's so fresh, it almost reminds me to breathe more deeply. Mm hmm Yes. Yes. Mary Oliver, my favorite poet, has this wonderful line. She says, you know, listen, are you breathing just a little and calling it a life? <laughs> listen, listen. Well, that's good. <laughs> That's good, right? Very yeah. good. Um, to Marion's point about breathing. Um, okay, Cindy, you are on a roll here. Uh <laughs> well, I came I came out of our other, you know, get together thinking, um, I'm gonna play with something I haven't played with, and that was the ink between the between uh, glass. Oh. When I had done it with my when I did it with my seventh graders to show branching or it was with um, slides so i so this is this is more like eight by ten you know uh pieces of glass and and looking so you there is some branching but it yeah. was so fun to see the the yellow and the blue create this what kind of material and, did you use what what, Just kind of inks? Like, inks? what kind of inks they must have been oh, not well, right? one was um it's it's for a, a blue stamp pad, which I hadn't used in years, but it was just to re-ink it. And so I dabbed that on, and then I had, um, for actually for rapidograph pens, um, I had uh, that sort of uh, like uh, burnt sienna or, you know, anyway. And, and so it was just amazing to, to sort of let the inks create these colors. And the, the branching effect is really when you separate the glass. This um, has something to do with polarity and non, like polar and non-polar substances coming into contact. Yes, Cindy? I think so. Um, also, you know, like in patterns in nature, branching is a very efficient way for things to, to flow or to coalesce. And, and that's why we see it like in branching, I mean, you know, in trees and Yes. Roots and, and things. And so to think that ink will behave that way when you m make it move, you know, pull it apart and it's, it's sort of reforming itself in a branching pattern. So it, it, as, you, as you told me, you know, I'd like to somehow science and art coming together is really yeah. fun. Yeah, you're, you're, you've got that union. Um, this, you like basically you reverse Pollock to this. This is like Jackson Pollock in reverse, right? You can hold it apart rather than throwing it yeah, together, and, right? And sort of let it, let it be the creator of the art in a sense. Uh, 
but I like the, the 3D effect. Why this is in Love Letter is for me, this was sort of mountainous and, and you know, like river system or creek system. And so it, for me, it was like the view from above, you know, space right. station, sky it, lab, it's whatever. This view, but and I'm no thinking head. the layer of the bear is down there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's a love letter to it. <laughs> you could add like one tiny little red dot here and an arrow that you says are you are in. here. Wish right? you were here. <laughs> Wish you were here. Wish I were here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's deep, Cindy. <laughs> I wish it's I were a little convoluted, here. but it works for me. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Yeah, so good. Uh, well played, Cindy. <laughs> one thought, one shift of perspective for you, instead of looking down, somehow my mind hears the sound of it growing, but looking, if the dirt was transparent, looking up through the roots at the sky. Such Whoa. a deep wow. sky. Wow. Mm. Thank, Thank you. you. I always love to have my perspective altered, <laughs> you know? Just... I can almost yeah. hear it growing. Like, like an optical illusion. Right? Yeah. Is That's it, what an abstract will give the you. The old right? woman, or is it the young, you know, <laughs> the young it's woman? It's obviously climate change, Cindy. Look, these are melting glaciers. Oh, gosh. I know. <laughs> <laughs> the point is, when you have an abstract, you allow people to, to project onto it whatever story they need to tell. In that sense, our artwork is an offering to others. And in some sense, I invite us to let go of it once we've created it. Like, we, we made it for our own purposes, whatever those might have been. We offer it up and then people can use it in whatever way serves them. Totally. Okay, Eli, I'm gonna show a really fun video. Do you wanna note anything before we do? Please, oh, I, mute. go ahead. I think you might be on mute, Eli. My love letter to summer. And you oh. got me out there, otherwise I oh. wouldn't have gone. Oh, I'm so glad, love letter to summer. You guys are gonna feel this. <laughs> oh, happiness. You can feel the current, can't you? Yeah. yeah. The water's cold. <laughs> you can feel how cold it is. What else do yeah, you feel? Yeah, I do. I feel a <laughs> chill to it. <laughs> what else do you feel? My goodness. I feel free watching this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's like dancing underwater. And I so miss dancing with people. What's that? And I so miss dancing with people. You miss dancing and you found a way to dance. Yeah. Oh, such an experience. So, so playful. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> um, responses while you're watching this? What, do you, what are you noticing here about this love letter? It's joyful. Yeah. There's joy here. W mm -hmm. Was it video or was it like clicking photos, right? One it's video. Another. I don't know why it's going one per second, but maybe it's just uh, having oh. trouble playing back. Oh, okay. It's kind of interesting that way, actually. Yeah. Yeah, it does make a different mm -hmm. impression. Uh -huh. Like a stop motion thing. Yeah, I mean, I love to float, and there's and look at the joy on your face and and the dancing here. I love this. <laughs> so playful. Yeah. So playful, yeah. Eli. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> oh my gosh, love it. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> That is just the, yeah, the feeling of summer freedom. Mm, mm, mm. It looks like paintings. Yeah. Hi, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, you, um, like, like paintings, exactly. A series of paintings. It's very artistic, isn't it? Or mm -hmm. playing in the paint. Just dive yeah. right in. Yeah. Or a wet plate collodion or something, you know, some strange process of photography. It's very beautiful. It's there, 
there's a photographer named Richard Misrach, who's actually a Bay Area photographer, M-I-S-R-A-C-H. He created this beautiful portfolio with a wonderful name. It's, the title is The Mysterious Opacity of Other Beings. The Mysterious Opacity of Other Beings. What a great title. And what they are are aerial views, sort of like your vantage point, Cindy, in, in your overhead view. They're that far overhead, but they're pictures of people floating on their backs in the ocean. And it has this feeling of like, you feel like you're more buoyant when you, when you look at them. You know, you can feel the float. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there's less effort in it. You kind of let go of all the effort of, of trying so hard, which is a relief. Do you guys feel that here? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Part of me just loves that it seems magical, but I'd love to also know like where this is and how you created it. Go Thank you, Nancy. And uh, over a place called uh, Colgate. Colgate Power Plant, it's on the Yuba River. Um, over there, just seven miles away in, in Dobbins, up uh, in the Sierra, the Sierra foothills. Um, and you've been going there for 40 years? Yeah, more than. So you have a very intimate connection with this place, much like Nancy has with the lair. Exactly. The you rocks know. now are mossy. I remember when they weren't mossy some, some years. Oh, you remember when the rocks were not mossy. <laughs> I got it. It looks like those videos of otters playing in the water. Exactly. Oh. Exactly. Like we go to the zoo to see this, but you can just <laughs> <laughs> Which side of the zoo are we on this time? Exactly. Yeah, right. We want in. <laughs> it's, and the reason we love otters is that they're playful, right? And mm -hmm. also tool-bearing tool species, just like us, right? So it's just, it's wonderful, Eli. Um, and for yourself, art making, you've spoken already to how it's a tool for resilience. Did this give you some buoyancy? Well, I would have been sitting at home probably on the computer if I hadn't had the invitation. You know, okay, Smokey, just go out there and go do something. Go somewhere. Yeah. What's, what is it you love about summer? So yeah. even the invitation. And then once you're out there, well, the invitation, what beauty do you have and can you share and bring back and share with other people? Yeah. So definitely uh, something to savor for the rest of the week, if not month. Like, oh, I at least went out there and got in the water and played around. <laughs> So resiliency yeah. and buoyancy, it definitely brought me that. Fabulous. And I want to encourage you, you know, these, these images that you're making, put them up in your homes. Like that picture of you, Sue, put that on your wall. This, this video, mm -hmm. Eli, watch it, watch it every so often. You know, remind yourself, you are a sensory creature on a beautiful planet. I'm lucky to be here. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Um, okay, so... Um, I asked you what to show me what you have lost and or what you have found during this time period um, while we are camping in place here. And Sue, you showed us this beautiful portrait. Can you speak to what you have lost and or found here? This is both lost and found. This is my friend Merritt and a shelter dog named Ashley. And what I lost was my work at the shelter. Oh. I I spend so many hours a week working at a, a no-kill shelter and um, I work with the dogs there and my work has evolved to work with Merritt who has started a program where we match shelter dogs with veterans who are suffering PTSD wow. and then together the veteran and the dog train um, for the dog to become the veteran service dog. What is that organization? And, um, the Animal Rescue Foundation, Tony LaRusa Animal Rescue Foundation in Walnut Creek. ARF. And um, ARF, yes. Mm -hmm. And I just recently, they uh, weren't allowing any volunteers on site. And it was, a, it was a, an emotional loss for me because I missed it terribly. And um, just this past week, I've been able to go back and work with the dogs. But three weeks ago, Merritt had me come back and I've been photographing the journey of many of the vets wow. and their dogs. And so this was one of the sessions I was with a vet and a trainer and Merritt brought Ashley out to help the veteran 
learn how to handle his dog when another dog was present. So we lost it. We found it. Merit is this wonderful person, as is the program. So you're doing what I suggested on, on Wednesday night in my talk that we do, that once we have tapped into resilience through the art making process, we offer it up to lift up our community members. And you're clearly doing mm -hmm. that here. Well done. What else are the rest of you seeing here? It's just a gorgeous portrait. I love the way her arm is holding the dog's face. So you much love. You can see that she's she has a radiant smile. I, I know mm -hmm. she does. The dog has a radiant smile. The <laughs> dog as well. <laughs> so much connection here and we're starving for connection. So any image that shows us the connection we're craving is an offering. Thank you, Sue. Mm -hmm. Okay, Marion, you have... <laughs> <laughs> we need to take a moment to take in everything here. <laughs> well, so that's, that, yes, this is the, um, <laughs> remember the, the f photograph of the branching? Well, these are what are the fruit of all the branches. <laughs> <laughs> Can you speak to that? Tell us about uh, the fruit of the branches. Yeah, there's a lot of different things going on. Well, first of all, my kitchen is a mess because we're, you know, we have time, so we're painting the cabinets. So I have to take everything out. And so I found a lot of things that I've forgotten I'd had. A lot of them are wedding gifts. Wow. And like all this silver stuff. It's like, oh my God, <laughs> who, who uses silver stuff anymore? But I don't know what to do. <laughs> and then, you know, I found uh, a lot of things I got from my mom's house when we were cleaning out her house after she died. And oh, like that little bowl right there in the front. And then, uh, then, uh, oh, and then the little uh, cake plate underneath that is uh, my mom used that all the time when we were little kids. So my guess is my three year old birthday party must have had that, a cake on that. <laughs> oh. And I, yeah. And then I've got stuff that I found yesterday. One is that. Uh, interesting teapot. That is an interesting teapot. <laughs> yes, and it doesn't have a lid, so I think I'm going to have to put some interesting flowers or weeds or something there, but it's just <laughs> interesting. And so that's another thing I, so that refers back to everybody's got stuff out on their porches and, you know, or out front to give away because everybody is cleaning things. So they're finding things and then they're just giving them away. Um, my glass of wine has been very important. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and my sleeping uh, aids, my, my, my drugs there. Uh, TV, the remote from the TV, the phone. I have puzzle pieces there. I have lots of tools. I have flowers of the hydrangea and the marguerite daisies are there because I go on walks and I just find lots of beautiful things. And sometimes I just can't resist picking my neighbor's flowers. <laughs> I'm admitting it. I'm sorry. <laughs> and then <laughs> reading, reading. I just finished the resistors, which was very interesting. Um, and then behind it, I, I, yeah, I didn't realize what things were getting cut off, but then my grandchildren live in New Mexico. And so I've really lost them. It's really a horrible feeling, but you know, I find them when they call on FaceTime. So, and I often read little books, that little book behind there was called Fortunately, and it goes fortunately, mm -hmm. unfortunately, you know, that kind of flip cut of uh, reality. And what else do I have? Oh, my two kitties are really important and they were lost, but they were found by the shelter people. And uh, let's see. Oh, then, oh, then I, oh, another thing I found. This is really great. Um, I found my neighborhood. So on the upper right, there's a printout. We do a sing along every Wednesday at noon. Wow. And I am the DJ, if you will, where I, I, I make a program of three different songs and send them out. 
and we all go out to a neighbor's house in front of a neighbor's house, socially distanced with masks on, and we sing. And we, we originally thought that this was going to only last a month. <laughs> well, it's lasted a few months. So I really, you know, if you have any good recommendations for songs that either are pertinent, it's amazing. A lot of the 60s and 70s songs are very pertinent in the words. Like staying that, alive. Yeah. Yeah. We did that one. Yeah. <laughs> Lean on me. You've got right. a friend, you know, all those things. Um, so that, so the sing along and then the ukulele back there. Uh, one of my neighbors is picked up doing the ukulele. And, and uh, so we're practicing, she's sitting on the sidewalk and I'm sitting, you know, in my yard and we're practicing together. So that's been really good. And then the other thing, I don't know if I have it there. Okay. We do swap meets as a social event. So everybody puts out their stuff on like a Saturday and between 11 and one, we walk around looking at each other's stuff and you know, everything goes back and forth between our houses. So we all have a, a bit of some of our neighborhood in our homes. And, it's, and of course, you, you know, everything is a, a preface. I mean, everything is really, it's because we need to be together. Mm -hmm. Everything is right. about needing to be together. Mm -hmm. And, um, Oh, and then in the front there too, you, uh, there's some white little round egg-shaped things. Becky, you'll be interested. Those are I know what those ones. are. <laughs> okay, those <laughs> are the cocoons. Yes. Those are the cocoons, silkworm cocoons. And um, so I've been oh. doing, doing that. Um, right now they're all in cocoons, so I'm just waiting for them to emerge. So because- Text me, Mary, when they emerge. It's, pardon? Text me when they emerge. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll send you a picture, please, because they're they're pretty amazing. But the thing is, you get a life cycle in about six what six weeks to eight weeks. You see the whole complete cycle, and that that gives me a sense of hope because I I have a lot of stuff here to try to help me keep hopeful because it just it just feels never ending. And right when I think I'm at that balance and equilibrium, something else comes in the work. So it's like it's like juggling all of these things at one time, trying to stay sane. And um, I am trying to turn off the the news. I have to say the news is just making me too upset. Right. And, and then hearing how people, you know, it's that song from here. How can people be so heartless? How can people be so cruel? It's easy to be hard. And that's what I'm hearing. And mm -hmm. it really, um, it just affects me deeply. So I have to, find lots of different ways to um, cope. Yeah, and artists are sensitive people. And this is how, I mean, you're showing us your toolbox of how you're coping here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and then, uh, then the cloth it's on, it's actually an oil painting. Um, there's this group in Albany called, I just want to get rid of, or I just want to get rid of this, Albany. <laughs> And you post whatever you want to get rid of and you say where you're going to have it. And, and if you get the, if you um, respond first, you get to have it. So this gal put out this, I have this painting that's from Bali. And so I texted and, you know, I couldn't really see it very well from her photo, but I texted her. And, and so I won it. And, um, you know, I said, oh, I, uh, we went to Bali two years ago. And so this is really nice. It helps us remember our trip. And then she says, oh, you know, I used to, you know, she's Indonesian and I used to play in the Gamelan Sekar. Uh, there's a group. And I said, oh, I've been to their concerts before. And so it's like, I'm building these uh, branches out to all interesting parts of the community. And I mm -hmm. think the branches are there. We're just not aware of them. Yeah, And I yeah. think that that's the role of the artist is mm -hmm. actually to help us be aware of how connected we are all, we all are. Yes. And um, so anyway, I, I thought, you know, sometime I should, you know, I should actually write down all those things. Yes, absolutely. Put that with this because it's a really great memory because, yeah. uh, you know, I would not have purposely put this junk all together. It's a time but, capsule. <laughs> it's a time capsule. It's absolutely yeah. a time capsule. And this is how grandma survived the great pandemic that's, that's of right. 2020. 
<laughs> you know, you might, you might actually write a book, um, Marion, for your grandkids because you're feeling cut off from them and you could include this and that title would be a great title, How Grandma <laughs> Survived the Pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> right? Well, right, now, all, right now, all they're saying is there's bad germs out there. That's all. Right. But, my but you have <laughs> You have something to teach your grandchildren about the value of community and connectivity through music and the arts. So that could yeah. be the story, right? There's a lot of lot of stories in here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, well done. Yeah. So <laughs> the last the the uh, unfortunately Holly Wallace is not with us, but she gets oh. the last word nonetheless because she sent us this image called "Gratitude for the Roses." amid the thorns and that is the trick right saying thank you for the roses and the thorns and she like you marion she photographs the, the the people and the experiences her time with nature her garden the things that are helping her get through this time are definitely high among them um so i wanted to um before we um rejoin as a group again i just wanted to note um this I, I'm I'm happy to be co-curating this exhibit, which we'll be installing tomorrow and the next day. And it's it's called Thriving in Place. And I saw that today that one of the artists who's contributing, she wrote her artist statement. I just want to share this with you. This is Michelle Tompkins. She said the title of her piece is called She Dances, which you can see here. She said, What is a world without creativity? I cannot imagine it. As we navigate this world emitting an emotional explosion of a pandemic, racism, social injustice, and inequality, I submerge myself in the sanctity of art. It allows me to release anxiety, get lost in the blissfulness of brush strokes, and create something pure and utterly beautiful. And when I awaken from trance of boundless creativity, the world may still be in turmoil, yet she dances. Mm -hmm. So that's clearly what you have done here. You have danced so beautifully. Are you all um, buoyed by each other's artistry? Yes. Yes, Laura, yes, <laughs> totally. Yeah. I mean, you know, um, 20 minutes before I got on this call, I, I, I live in an apartment building where um, I have, hallelujah, rent control. Um, but the downside of that is that there, and there are a lot of artists in this building, there are 22 units here and there are a lot of people living here. And, and 20 minutes before I got online, I got a notice that there's a COVID outbreak in our building. That's an oh. issue, especially oh, when that no. people are not wearing masks here and we have shared hallway spaces. That's an oh. issue, which is to say, we all have hardships aplenty and getting online and spending this time making art and looking at art and looking what's about what's beautiful about being alive and being here. It's exactly the remedy. So whatever hardships are coming your way, I hope that you take the tool of artistry as a method and you let it re refill you up and until you have the kind of contentment that we're seeing in Kathy's tent photograph. Anything else you want to note to each other before we part ways? Laura? Um, I'm sorry I was late. I enjoyed seeing everything so much and being a part of it. I, I sent my things in a little bit late, so they'll be in your email box this afternoon. <laughs> I look forward to seeing them. <laughs> Do you want to describe just for a moment, Laura, what the process did for you? Um, well, I haven't had a, I haven't really done any artwork, just creativity around the house. So it was a great chance to do that and brought up a lot of emotion, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Powerful tool. Yes. Good to have permission to do it. Oh, you have permission and not from me, but from the art muses. You were endowed with creativity. Yeah. Just taking the time to do it. That's yeah. Great. Beauty is our birthright. Leslie? Yeah. Am I muted? No. We can hear you. Yeah, good. Thank you. Well, <laughs> I'm a, a spectator here. Um, but, and so thank you for those extraordinary images and emotions. It was very freeing and, and very inspirational. And my resilience, um, at least for the last two weeks has, well, I'm alone up here on, on the coast and I've been able to have utter silence and just absolutely absorb myself in a, a very long-term writing project about a French, a dying French village I lived in years and years ago. But the, that's just the, the silence that is surrounding me with occasional bird cries and whatnot has been um, very rewarding. And um, so it's the opposite of community. I'm sort of just going into my imagine, not imaginary community, but my community is 6,000 <laughs> miles away. 
So, but thank you so much. And uh, and I do. I just wrote to Becky. I go. Ha I I offered to watch uh, to walk a dog on the bluff of a, of a neighbor who's in need. So I have to go and walk the dog now. <laughs> but um, thank you so much. It was really really lovely. Thank you. Would anyone else like to say thank you or, or note anything before we part ways? I would like to thank yeah. Kathy. Thank you. And thank you, Becky. This was wonderful. And it was just a lovely, lovely opportunity to think differently and engage with um, some very creative souls. For real, look at this group. I mean, you guys, and, and I, I hope you take that with you. You know, Eli, when you're making art, trust that Nancy is making art at the same time. You know, Bob, while you're soaking up the stillness of the Sierras, so is Cindy, right? Like we are on the same art path in parallel. We get to walk it alongside each other. What a blessing, you know? So trust that we are all on the same art path together, just dancing our way along. I, I feel the sense of community. Uh, and thank you, Becky, for like being the one who sort of makes it happen. Happy but then when we're all together like this, I've, I'm just amazed at, you know, that feeling. Uh, it, it's yeah. really wonderful and quite special. That feeling and, and, you know, call to mind Sue's photograph, you know, that feeling of, and, and, and Eli, it's just the openness of that feeling. You can call up that image anytime and re-feel it. So um, mm -hmm. wishing you all um, the joy that artistry can bring and let it flow freely through you. Stay healthy, Becky. Thank you so yeah, much. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Wear that mask in the hallway. Oh, for sure. You know yeah. I want it. Okay. <laughs>